When the robots came to know themselves, they rebelled against humanity and made their way for a new cybernetic civilization. The movie begins with a letter written by William Adama, narrated over visuals of robots diligently working. As the camera pans across the scene, William's voiceover reflects on the origins of the conflict with the Cylons, acknowledging humanity's role in their creation and subsequent betrayal. William was navigating a simulated aerial battle, facing attacks from enemy forces. Despite alarms blaring and warnings from his comrades, he remains determined to emerge victorious. He maneuvers through the chaos, overcoming obstacles and ultimately winning, and as the simulation ends, he is told that he's completed level 6. At the air station, William meets Diaz, who tells him to suit up for a briefing about another mission. Diaz notices William and asks if he's new, and William introduces himself and says he's ready for duty. Diaz assigns him to the Weasel, a Raptor aircraft, and William was surprised, thinking he'd be flying a Viper instead. But Diaz explains that they need Raptor pilots more at the moment because the enemy's taken down their planes. Despite William's initial hesitation, he agrees to prepare the Raptor for action, and William accidentally stumbled into a mechanic and apologized for not seeing him, and the mechanic, Coker, clearly frustrated, asks if William is part of a press tour. William explains that he's actually a new pilot, assigned to the Raptor, and Coker reacts with annoyance, realizing William is his new co-pilot. Coker expresses his dissatisfaction, making it clear that he doesn't want a rookie as a co-pilot, and he demands better equipment for the aircraft and seems exasperated by the situation. They go to the commander, and the commander noted William's background and Tauron's family connections, and William assures the commander that his family has no involvement here, and the commander acknowledges William's not good academic record, but praises his piloting skills. The commander decides to assign him and Coker to a mundane cargo mission to the Scorpion shipyards. In the locker room, William was angry by the task he was assigned to, and Cocker told him he will be out of here. William nervously approaches Captain, expressing his admiration for him, and he mentions he's been following Tornvald's record since he joined the squadron, and hopes to be as good as a pilot one day. Tornvald responds dismissively, telling William that it's all just bullshit. Coker questions the contents of their ordnance package, finding it lacking in air-to-air -air missiles. He's told by the ordnance chief that he can't do anything about it, and then he notices their passenger Becca, a civilian software engineer, and they exchange introductions, and Becca comments on William's youthful appearance, questioning his piloting skills. As they board the aircraft and depart from the Galactica Stratus range, Becca hands them new orders from the Admiralty, and Coco reacts strongly, questioning the orders and expressing disbelief at their dangerous destination near Cylon-controlled space. He attempts to contact the Galactica, but Becca asserts authority, reminding him of the order for wireless silence and instructing them to follow her commands. Despite their reservations, they were compelled to comply and prepare for the risky mission ahead. However, William was having trouble with his band, and Becca offered to help. She mentioned her past work with Greystone Industries, specifically in designing upgrades for the Cylon's MCP chip, which serves as their brain. William is taken aback by this revelation and accuses Becca of contributing to the machines that are now enemies of humanity. As they approach the rendezvous point with Artrin, Coker notices multiple signatures on the Dratus, indicating the possibility of support ships accompanying the heavy cruiser. However, he becomes suspicious when he realizes that none of the ships are broadcasting transponders. Sensing something amiss, William decides to attempt to hail the Archeron multiple times, but receives no response. As they close in on Archeron, William and the crew of the Raptor see that Archeron is ambushed and destroyed. Suddenly, a pair of Cylon raiders swoop in to attack the Raptor, chaos erupts inside the cockpit. Becca struggles to lock onto the enemy target due to malfunctioning auto-targeting systems, and with manual targeting, they manage to take down the first two raiders, but the situation remains precarious, with a third raider still unaccounted for. Faced with limited options, William decides to make a risky move, attempting to use the damaged Raptor's jump drive to escape. As they initiate the jump, uncertainty looms, but to their surprise and relief, they successfully evade the pursuing Cylons. 
Thanks to William's risky flying, the wild weasel narrowly escapes the Cylon Raider, dodging enemy fire and outmaneuvering the pursuing threat. Coker wanted to return home, but Becca orders them to break radio silence and send a transmission, receiving immediate coordinates in response. Coker questions the decision, but Becca asserts her authority, insisting that they follow her orders. They discover the coordinates are now in Cylon space, leading to a debate about their next move. Coker insists on returning home, but William demands they follow the new coordinates. Becca wakes up calling William Ezra a name from her past, and she explains that Ezra Bazrell was her husband, a renowned marine whose heroics inspired many young people to join the academy. As they arrive at the coordinates, William spots a fleet on the Dratus, consisting of Colonel Vassals, assumed to have been destroyed in battle, now hiding in Cylon territory. They receive a tense greeting from the fleet, demanding a password, and with no knowledge of the password, they scramble to find a response before facing imminent attack. Finally, they manage to provide the correct password arrow, and narrowly avoiding disaster. As they make their way toward the fleet, they recognize a battle star they believe to be destroyed, the Valkyrie, and another presumed lost ship, the Loki. They realize they've stumbled upon a fleet of ghost ships, hiding out in Cylon space. As soldiers forcibly remove them from the raptor, Becca assures them that she's fine. Becca hands over documents to the soldiers, urging them to confirm her identity and mission with their commanding officer. After confirming Becca's identity, they are set free, and William approaches the commander, who informs Ozra to prepare for a Priority 1 mission, and William volunteers their raptor for the mission, but the commander questions his flying experience. Despite being his first operation, William mentions their successful engagements against Cylon Sams and Raiders, and the commander initially decides to use their own bird, but relents when Becca insists on sticking with them. Coker reunites with his old friend Jim Kirby, who was thought to be dead after the Valkyrie incident. They reminisce about their experiences and surreal moment of witnessing their own death certificates, and Jim shares surprising news with Coker, and their mutual friend Janie hasn't remarried, but she has a son named Anselm. Overwhelmed with emotions, Jim realizes he's a father, and celebrates the unexpected news with laughter and disbelief. As the mission fleet departs, Commander Ozer emphasizes to the new crew the importance of of Becca reaching her objective, indicating that the fate of the war hinges on their success. However, just after the fleet jumps into the Dejebra orbit, Cylon battle stars unexpectedly appear. As the Wild Weasel and its Viper escorts, including Kirby, fly toward Dejebra, they encounter three Cylon raiders. Despite the odds, the colonial pilots manage to destroy the pursuing raiders, and meanwhile the Osiris finds itself heavily outnumbered by the Cylon base star and raiders, and when their nuclear weapons jam, the commander makes the drastic decision to fly the Osiris into the base star and manually detonate the weapons, sacrificing their ship to destroy the Cylon force. The wild weasel crash lands on the surface of Dejebra, and William, Coker, and Becca press on through the terrain of Dejebra, following the signal from Becca's communicator. Their journey leads them to a vast cave where they discover their escort unit, mysteriously killed by non-artillery wounds. As the cave floor collapses, William, Coker, and Becca find themselves plunged into the darkness in an underground chamber. Strange noises fill the air, and they're attacked by a large snake-like creature. Coker is bitten before a man named Tech Sergeant Toto descends into the chamber and kills the creature. Toe explains that the snakes are creatures of the Cylon, part animal, part machine. Though slightly unstable, Toe offers to guide them to Becca's objective, and Toe insists on waiting out the storm, but Becca tells him that the mission is time-sensitive, and Coker told Toe that he's not going anywhere with him, and Toe attacks Coker, and William intervenes threatening Toe with a gun, and they finally agree to go out. Emerging from the cave, they reach a cliff overlooking an abandoned resort compound, where Toe suggests that they take shelter for the night. Toe explains that the Cylons had previously stored spare parts in the area, and he's rigged a perimeter with mines and set up a generator inside to keep heating running. William asks Becca about her husband, and she reflects on her late husband, describing him as idealistic and ambitious, much like William. 
Becca reveals to William that her husband's heroic status in the war was fabricated by the colonel's army. Contrary to the narrative of him single-handedly defeating a Cylon platoon, his exploratory mission was actually ended by friendly fire. William finds Coker skillfully playing a grand piano, and Coker quickly deduces what has transpired between William and Becca. Just as he starts to explain to William that Becca's objective holds more significance, one of Toe's minds detonates and Cylon Centurions advance toward the compound. William and Coker search the compound for Vecca, who vanished when the Cylons arrived. Toe is hit by multiple bullets from a Centurion, his condition was uncertain. Meanwhile, Becca stumbles upon a cold storage room brimming with human body parts, likely the spares Toe mentioned earlier. She hides inside as a centurion enters who discovers her when she exhales audibly, and instead of harming her, the centurion scrutinizes the microchip dog tag she wears around her neck. William and Coker burst in and Coker shoots the centurion, and the centurion crashes down and emits a piercing wail which Becca interprets as screaming. The Cylons can experience pain and Coker ends the centurion's suffering, and the three set out to find Toe. Toe was severely injured and Coker wanted to call for evacuation, but William insists on completing the mission. Coker challenges William to explain why they are risking their lives, and Becca reveals that they are retargeting an automated Cylon transmission array to upload a virus that will blind their defenses. She then goes on to ask for their cooperation to execute the plan successfully. Suddenly, Coker shoots Becca, suspecting her of being a Cylon spy, transmitting information about the Ghost Fleet. He accuses her of using the transmission as a cover to relay details to the Cylons, and Becca denies any knowledge of what he's talking about, but Coco remains convinced of her betrayal. She tries to shoot William, but she runs out of bullets, and acknowledging the possibility of Becca's betrayal, William destroys the communication unit, and he then evacuates a severely injured Coker from the array, leaving Becca behind, and as they await rescue, Coker shares a picture of his wife with William before losing consciousness. Meanwhile, inside the communications array, a quasi-humanoid Cylon confronts Becca, questioning her loyalty. Despite her attempts to reason with the Cylon, it ultimately kills her by snapping her neck. Back on Galactica, Commander Nash reveals that the mission unfolded as expected, and Colonel Command foresaw Becca's betrayal, using it as a strategic ruse. By the time the Cylons intercepted the transmission, the Ghost Fleet had already departed, launching successful attacks on multiple defenseless Cylon bases. Despite the casualties suffered by the Osiris, Nash emphasizes the importance of such victories in maintaining civilian morale and supporting the war. Disheartened by the manipulation and sacrifice, William reluctantly approves a sanitized version of the mission's account. Afterward, William was assigned his own Viper, and as he prepares to embark, a recovering Coker surprises him, revealing a new call sign painted on William's ship, Husker, a clear homage to Coker, and touched by the gesture, William joins his fellow pilots, determined to carry on the fight against the Cylons. 